Hey guys, what's up? So a while back I made a video that was kind of just a basic introduction to OpenSCAD, which is a, a parametric modeling program. And it was basically just meant to be a very, very simple uh, introductory tutorial. It was just the basics. However, as I want to create more tutorial content in the future, I figured I'd make a kind of successor to that video and um, make one that kind of delves more in depth into uh, parametric design and uh, parameterized modeling. So you can change one variable and it'll, and the uh, design will change accordingly. So I figured a great way to demonstrate that would be with one of these finite fidget spinners or whatever you want to call them that are uh, very popular recently as uh, they have a number of different properties that would be good in an application like this, like uh, the number of bearings, the diameter of the bearings, etc. So we're going to be talking about all of that. And um, if you haven't seen the older video, I recommend you check it out before you try and follow this one, as um, uh, this one kind of picks up uh, having known the basics already. So uh, yeah, let's just dive right in. All right, so now that we're in OpenSCAD, the first thing we're going to do is set some variables. So if we think about the spinner, there are a number of different attributes that it has. Um, one of them being the number of bearings on the, uh, the number of outer bearings or the distance between bearings or the thickness around the bearings. So we're just gonna set some variables uh, relating to these different attributes. So we'll start by doing a variable called outer bearings and we'll set that equal to four. So that will be the number of bearings uh, on the outside. Uh, we'll make another variable that's the distance between bearings. So we'll have it be bear bearing distance, and we'll set that to uh, 35 millimeters. We'll set a uh, value for the, um, for the thickness around bearings. So we can set that as thickness equals, um, and we can just say like this, we can say like eight. Then the bearings themselves actually have dimensions. So um, we'll set like a bearing uh, radius and we'll set that equal to 11 since I'm using 22 millimeter diameter bearings. And we will set a last variable as bearing height and we'll set that to eight because that's the height of the bearings that I'm using. Now that we've set up these variables, we can start to use them to generate some actual geometry. So we're going to begin by setting up all the bearings and their formation. We're going to make cylinders to represent them, and uh, we're going to start with the central bearing. So we can use the cylinder function, and we can set the first parameter, um, which is the height, as bearing height. We can set the second parameter, which is the radius, as r equals uh, bearing radius. And then we can set the last variable or parameter that is uh, as true, which just makes it centered at the origin point. So if we run this, you see it generates a little cylinder that has the exact dimensions of our central bearing. To make the other bearings, you might think that we could just copy and paste this line and move them around, but then it wouldn't be parametric as let's say you wanted three bearings. Then if we have four lines that just create cylinders, then that obviously won't work. So we're, we're going to have to do instead is make a for loop. So the way you do that in OpenSCAD is you do for and then open parentheses, I equals and then open bracket and you have the number you're starting at and the number you're counting up to. So we're gonna start at one, we're gonna do colon, and then we're going to count up to the number of outer bearings, which is outer bearings. And just do a closed bracket and a closed parenthesis and a open brace, and then 
we have a for loop that we can put stuff in and it'll run as many times as we have outer bearings. So we can copy and paste the line we have to generate uh, cylinders and we can paste that in here and it generated all those cylinders but you can't see all the different ones since they're all in the same spot but there should be a total of five bearings there. The four outer ones and the uh, one central one that we had made previously. Now that's a problem if they're all in the same space because I mean then for the obvious reasons they're not on the outside as they should be. So we can use the translate function to, to move them out. So we'll do translate and then uh, open parentheses, open bracket. Um, then we can do bearing distance because that's the distance we're moving them away from the center by. And we'll do that on the x-axis. Yep, that's fine. And then we'll just do zero for the y-axis and zero for the z-axis. And then closed bracket, close parenthesis, um, and then open open brace, and then closed brace uh, beneath the cylinders. So then if we run that, they should all be off to the side now. However, they should be all equally spaced around the central bearing. Right now we just have one at the center and then four all together off to the side. So the way we rotate them is before our translate function, we do rotate, um, open parentheses, uh, open bracket, and then we do zero comma zero comma because we're only moving it on the z-axis. And for the z-axis, we're going to rotate it by 360 divided by the outer bearings div, um, multiplied by i. And then we can do close, close parenthesis and, or close bracket and then close parenthesis. So the reason we put that value in is because we want the outer bearings to be equally spaced around the inner bearings. So we took 360 degrees. We divided that by the number of outer bearings, in this case, four. So three, 360 divided by four, 90, um, multiplied by whatever iteration the for loop is on. So if the for loop's on the first bearing, then it'll just be 90. Uh, if it's on the second bearing, then it'll be 180. If it's on the third bearing, it'll be 270, etc. So following that, we can just do open brace, open uh, close brace down there. And then if we run this, you'll see it generates the, all the center bearing and then all the outer bearings equally spaced around it. So we have all our bearings set up as they should be. And before we'll move on to the next thing, we're going to group them all together by doing union before everything else, uh, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, uh, open brace, and then below our last line there, close brace. And there will be no uh, noticeable change as a result of it, but now they're just grouped into one singular geometry. After all that, uh, we're going to start making the frame around these bearings, as what we're going to do is subtract these cylinders uh, that we just made from the frame that we're about to make. So, we're going to, as the uh, frame is going to be kind of an outline of the bearings that we've created here, we're actually gonna start by just taking this code right here, copying it, pasting it right above itself. So now what this will do is generate two sets of these. However, that's not much use to us. What we're going to do is in this code up here where we're generating the frame, we're going to change the uh, radius parameter in the cylinder functions um, to bearing radius plus thickness because that was our variable that was um, going to be the thickness from the bearing to the outside of the, um, of the frame. So we can just add plus thickness. 
So now that we've rendered this out, we can see that it creates the uh, same formation, just with a larger uh, radius circles. However, this isn't the shape we're really going for. We want it to be um, kind of a, a uniform, uh, uniform outline and not really have these kind of convex spots like this. So luckily there's a tool in a, a, a function in OpenSCAD that's very similar to the uh, loft tool in many CAD softwares and it's called the hull tool. So what we can do is around our for loop here, if we put hull and open parenthesis, close parenthesis, open brace, and then do a close brace down here, what we get is the uh, outer outline of all the um, cylinders that we created. However, this isn't exactly what we want either. It's a step in the right direction, as if you look at the spinner I have here, and you see kind of trace around it, you, you get a shape like that. However, we want it to kind of go in and around the, the bearings. So what we need to do is instead of having all the outer bearings being hauled together in a way, um, we're gonna have them be hauled to the center bearing. So how we're going to do that is we're first going to move the hull function inside our for loop, so right before rotate, translate, and all of that, and move our line that creates the uh, center bearing uh, before the bracket of, before the closing brace of the hull function. And now if we render that out, then we get the general frame that we're looking for. Now the final step here is to subtract um, the bearing cylinders that we had created earlier from this frame that we had made here. So what we're going to do is use difference, open close parentheses, uh, open brace, and then an open brace at the bottom there. And we get a finished fidget spinner frame. So just to demonstrate the parametric properties of this, if we change the outer bearing number to three, then it turns into uh, more of a Y-shaped spinner. If we change it to two, then it turns into this straight spinner with two bearings on the outside. We can even decrease it down to one outer bearing and we get something like this. Now this isn't balanced, but these are still fun. And as you can see, it scales really well. We can even put this up to like seven and we still get a perfect spinner. So this applies for all of the variables that we made, where adjusting any single one will not affect the others and they can all be manipulated individually and they will all come together to create a spinner. The last thing I wanna show is how to get rid of this kind of jaggedness on the edges where um, it's not perfectly round and it's just made up of these rectangular faces. So that's not just an artifact of the rendering, that's actually the geometry of it. However, um, you can increase the poly count by changing a, a, a global variable that's called a, the dollar sign and then FN, and just set that equal to something like 100. And then when you render it out, you'll see that the sides are much smoother and, and all nice and perfect. So this was not meant to be an exhaustive tutorial. Uh, on parametric design in that there's a lot you can do with uh, with OpenSCAD. Just look on Thingiverse and you'll see all the crazy math art people make, um, which is super cool by the way. However, even with this particular application, um, there's a lot you could do. Like in this case, I could use a, uh, a variable for tolerances since uh, 3D printers aren't perfect and you need to give them a little leeway. I could add in a variable for that that could be changed depending on um, the precision of the printer at use. So there's, there's still a lot that can be done. And so if you want to follow this tutorial, I encourage you um, to see if you can take it a step further. See if you can put your own little spin on it, no pun intended there, um, 
and, and just make it different and improve on it because that's the best way to learn. And that's why I'm making these videos is because I want people to learn. So I hope you walk away having learned something from this video. Now, I totally understand if you don't want to follow the tutorial and just want one of these cool spinners, in which case you can check out the Thingiverse page where I have um, this code uploaded into Customizer. So you can just type in the uh, numbers into the web interface and it'll spit you out the STL for one of these spinners for you to print at your leisure. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, then you should know what to do. And please let me know uh, what you thought of this video in the comments, as this was my first kind of tutorial in which I uh, did programming in any way, shape, or form. And I'm also still kind of getting used to doing tutorials in general. So please let me know if you have any criticism or suggestions or recommendations, etc. Um, if you want to follow my work, please subscribe. I'll catch you later. XYZ Aiden.